Okay. Sorry, don't wake you up. Now then, uh, what we are going to do today is pick up where we left off yesterday. Uh, I want to investigate a bit more what I can do with uh, this LaTeX. Now, what I do know is I can use uh, the Pandoc system uh, to translate LaTeX. Uh, or yeah, you know, or even raw tech. Um, but what I don't, I don't really want to do that. Uh, well, I, okay, I'm going to use it for some of the processing. One of the things I want to be able to do is pick out uh, some metadata, and it occurred to me uh, between the last uh, session and now, it might be interesting to. Uh, actually use LaTeX to produce the blog. Uh, if there's enough flexibility in the way the HTML is produced, uh, there's no reason why it shouldn't be used to produce the blog. I can produce them, for example, as articles, which means that every blog entry, and, and this is where I'm thinking because yeah, I don't really want to write blogs per se. I want to write articles about individual subjects. Uh, they might be very short. I don't know. Uh, okay, that's really what a blog is. Um, but it occurred to me that by writing those articles, first of all, they become very reusable easily because parts of those articles can then be included into other things. Secondly, they're very easy to produce as a PDF. Nicely formatted uh, using the article class. Um, now, I have a vague memory that the memoir class actually has the ability to produce articles, which means you can have all of the features of memoir and its extra features, as it were. Uh, in producing an article. So let's start by looking at that, shall we? Um, what we need is uh, to look at the memoir later class. And uh, don't know whether basic user manual is going to do it. Uh, right, so uh, we've got uh, we've got okay, document divisions which we know about, uh, layout page, blah blah blah. blah. Um, Okay, let's go to index. Mm. Article. Now you got article class and article option. Uh, uh, let's go to 88. There seems to be a confluence there. So the heading is targeted like section heading in the article class. This is similar to the section style, but different font and spacing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if you use only the predefined chapter styles, uh, blah, 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 blah. okay, this is about modifying the layout. Oops. That wasn't what I wanted to do. Uh, all right. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's open this in um, uh, 
Yeah, okay. Uh, I think I've got this in my Evernote. So if I go to desktop 2 and uh, that's convenient. Uh, so if I open with Skim, uh, and then bring that across here like that. And Right, okay, so, okay, so we're all on the same page, good -o. and uh, we've got the article chapter style. Uh, Okay, so that just means that uh, when we choose the chapter style to be article, it will be like a section. Uh, so with a little bit of tweaking, book class documents can be made to look just like article class documents, uh, and the memoir class is designed with tweaking very much in mind. So. Uh, we class attempt to integrate some of the more design related packages with the LaTeX book class. I chose the book class as the report class is virtually identical to the book, except that book does not have an abstract environment. Or report does, however, it's easy to, uh, it is easy to fake an abstract if it's needed. Uh, okay. Okay, well, that was just the rationale of the author. Uh, okay, what do we have here? Options. So this is uh, Right, so these are the options uh, that you can add to, presumably, the document class declaration. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so here you can see the document class, and then, as is typical of the document class, you've got the options. Uh, uh, so uh, you can specify the option you want uh, being from the UK A4 paper would be a favorite uh, but I believe it also does uh, uh, there was another yeah, you've got, there you go, ebook, uh, 6.9 inches. Uh, whereas A4 is uh, something like 8 by 11, thereabouts. Uh, uh, then you've got a letter, which is the more American format. Uh, and then all options except the landscape are mutually exclusive. The default stock paper, yeah. So, so all all landscape does is reverse the X and Y. So you do A for landscape and get the X and Y inverted. Uh, uh, right, so type size options, right, so we've got the type size options set the default font size throughout the document. Uh, now you've got extended font sizes. Uh, then you've got the printing options, two-sided or one-sided, which will dictate things like 
uh, if you do uh, headings uh, you might want to always have in you know, the top right uh, Uh, the top right of the recto page will want say the page number whereas you want it on the top left of the verso page uh, one column versus two column well of course uh, traditionally articles uh, are two column uh, or possibly even three but two column normally uh, although when you're doing it for the internet and you know, for a web page normally you'd say one uh, if you're printing it you'd want two column uh, open right that's traditional uh, right and then you've got uh, really the resolution show trims that's more for printing and which shows where the cuts need to be made to trim the page because uh, you get the normally the stock paper is larger than the final thing so if you're producing an a4 document uh, for a printer you normally would have stock that is paper which is slightly bigger than a4 you would do the printing and then it would all be cut to size uh, for the final book uh, uh, no doubt it also mentioned a bleed uh, which is the amount you allow for example images to overlap where it's going to be cut that makes sure you get it the image right up to the edge of the page uh, where are we uh, are we? No, uh, equations will be numbered at the left uh, okay uh, so left equation number the FL equation number uh, display math environments will be indented in amount from the left margin. Hmm. Uh, bib, each part of a bibliography will start a new line. Each part of a bibliography. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay, because the bibliography entry contains things like, you know, title, author, date published, all that kind of stuff. Uh, normally, you'd write those all on a single line. Uh, what this is saying is, it separates them out. Uh, simulates the article class, but the chapter command is not disabled. Uh, it just behaves as if it was section. Chapters do not start a new page, and chapter headings are typeset like a section heading. Okay. Number of the bigger is continuous and not by chapter. However, a part command will put its heading on a page by itself. Cool. So, what you can do then is you can actually use article. Yeah, okay. So, that's what you'd end up doing. We'd end up doing a, a memoir with an article as a, an option. Uh, Now then, uh, oh, here's some examples. Uh, calling the class with no options is equivalent to letter paper, 10 point, two side, one column, open, right, final. Okay. And um, this particular manual was set with letter paper 10. Uh, now, presumably, uh, the default is going to be taken from this set. So, hmm, intriguing. Yeah, <clears throat> thought so. Yeah, so in actual fact, these are redundant because 
no part of the defaults. Uh, so really, it just needed to be document class to extra font sizes, because uh, the rest of it is is the default. Uh, Uh, and you can tell by looking here that you've got uh, that this is fully justified because it's justified left and right. Uh, so what's this? Uh, the two side two column option. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Do, do you balance the columns if they're short of the page, or do you allow them to be different? Uh, Cool. I, did, I remember many oh, it'd be years ago now, I did actually read this manual and it's really interesting. It's well worth reading because uh, not only does it do give you all the details about the way the memoir class works, it also has a lot in here about typesetting itself, uh, you know, and all the terminology. Uh, here we go, you know, what stock material is, uh, uh, what counts as a page, what's a leaf, so a leaf. Uh, so, in a book, uh, you get a leaf, which is uh, the actual piece of paper. Then you get two surfaces on a piece of paper, uh, and they are the pages. So you've got the, this page and this page. So when it's in a book, uh, so when you look at it like this, uh, you imagine there's a like just... Okay, so your book looks like this. And you open it up, and you're now looking at two leaves uh, with two pages. And each page has got a page on this side and a page on this side. Okay. And you've got um, uh, you've got two sides of the page. Okay. So you've got uh, the recto and the verso, uh, which. Uh, Uh, and like, as I said earlier, the page stock will always be slightly larger than the final page of the book because what they do is they print it and then they trim it. And the reason you do that is because there's a slight uh, what they call bleed, which is where they expect the printed material potentially to go over the edge of the page. So for example, if you've got a nice graphic, you want to go right up flush to the edge of the page. Don't try and print up to the edge of the page. What you do is you print over where the stock is going to be cut. Then when you cut it, it looks like it's been printed all the way to the edge. Where in actual fact, it was printed over the edge. And that little bit that goes over the edge is called the bleed. Mm. Of course, when it's a purely a printed book, then you don't get that. So, uh, yeah. And then you get the, the if several pages are put together, like this, okay, so you get, um, you get a whole bunch of pages, uh, leaves, okay, and they're, they're producing a book like that, um, and, and that's the folio. Um, and you, if it's a big book, then you get many. Uh, in fact, here we go. Uh -huh. okay, so if you look carefully at the edge of a book, uh, in actual fact, this one is this one's glued, okay, so we've got. Uh, all the pages in this one are, are glued down the spine, uh, so you don't see the folio. Uh, this one, though, you can, even though it is also glued. Uh, so you can actually see down the spine, uh, you can see where the folios are, uh, where the pages are sort of bundled together. Uh, Right. right now then uh, anyway that was a complete uh, this is completely aside it's got nothing to do with what i wanted to talk about or to think about okay let's uh uh let's do some experimenting because what i want to try and establish uh, uh, okay. 
suppose it's really helpful to stop opening up skin from here because it causes a lot of output. What I want to establish is um, what the output of this is. So uh, you know we did the experiment HT LaTeX on uh, what was it book? Uh, okay, and when we look at the uh, book HTML, actually, I, I don't need to open it up really. Uh, um, uh, if I look at the HTML, uh, oops. Uh, right, what I've got here is fairly standard HTML. We're, we're not using HTML5. Uh, we've got a few markers. Uh, and there's some oddities like the body tag has been split for some reason. Uh, Uh, I mean, we can change pretty much all of this anyway, but what I was interested in is the chapter heading is in H2, presumably a part heading therefore is in H1, section head is in H3, but it doesn't have, for example, the section tags. Uh, let's put the anchors in. Uh, Very interesting oddities here. Uh, to put a marker in the comment. Presumably, this is used by Tech4HT when it's actually doing the processing. Um, because uh, if you remember that's the reference that we put in uh, and the link here yeah okay so it's linking one to this id uh, up here x1001 uh, yeah so that's the anchor Mm. Uh, okay, it is using a div for the index. The question is, is there a way of encouraging this thing to use uh, a full HTML? Okay, so you can see it's HTML4 transitional, which is pretty old. Hasn't there been any updates? Uh, let's go. Oh, actually, uh, oopsie daisy. Uh, let's try that again, shall we? Oh, it's one of those days, wrong, isn't it? Okay, so we want to do. Okay, and then over here. Uh, so we've got Tech Four HD. Okay, now then. Um, no, is the This is produced twenty nineteen, so
UTFI encoding. Uh, no, a special make file. Ah. Oh, looks promising. The following command uses the HTML tidy command to fix some common errors in the generated HTML file. Okay. Uh, and the following extensions are available. LaTeX make. Uh, mm. Okay, so presumably I can do something like uh, instead of using HT like it, I can use make uh, for HT and we'll do HTML5 plus tidy plus uh, LaTeX make build. And then uh, tech and we've got some warnings but on the whole. Now let's take a look at the HTML. Uh, well it looks tighter, we haven't got a lot of break. Uh, it's separated stuff out into the CSS file. This looks a bit neater. Uh, It's still not putting in section headings. Yeah, it's not putting in any section markers. It's tidied the, well, it's tidied the output, and uh, there's no doubt about that. I haven't really done much more than that, though. Um, it's added in uh, the viewport. I don't think that was there before. Let's have a look what it looks like. Uh, let's uh, take that. Uh, I've got a feeling actually I already opened this up. Maybe not. Uh, right, so it doesn't look spectacular, but then what does? Uh, look at the page source. Uh, here's the cascade style sheet, and this is obviously the thing that we would manipulate to make it not look like crap. Mm. But it's designed uh, it's designed to look 
like something very basic, I guess. Okay. Um, okay, so okay, let's um. You can hear a funny tapping noise. I don't know. There's some building works or something going on. It goes on for a while and then stops. May not be high enough to register. Uh, right, um, where were we? Yes, we were looking at this, weren't we? Um, okay, so. Hmm. Oh, it's a static site generator. Oh, this can be useful, for example, for maintaining a blog with each document in its own directory. In the parent directory, a configuration file ensures proper processing. Cool. Filter settings, static site, site route. Uh, if mode equals publish, then. Hmm. Uh, for both filters. Next command. Mm -hmm. Mm Static unless we can pick it to look at files. It also looks like it's using uh, YAML metadata. Oh, <laughs> and in fact, the document header blah, 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 containing YAML format extracted from the HTML file. Only the contents of the document body remain in the document. The old header is stripped off. The static Generator can then create a page based on the template and the variables in the YAML. Right. 
Okay. So what was it doing then? So it's just, uh, it's not building the site per se then, what it's doing is it's building a bunch of YAML, a bunch of HTML with some additional YAML, I guess. Okay, that bears some looking into. Uh, use the DOM filter in the following example. Okay, this is gonna. This is gonna yeah. Okay. Um, let's stick it in. I think that was going to bear reading. Uh, and it certainly looks like it's uh, something worth pursuing. Uh, now, one of the... Uh, Okay, I'd started going down the road of writing basic uh, markdown uh, with uh, metadata uh, and using that to generate the various websites. Uh, however, it became fairly obvious fairly early on that some of the aspects that I wanted to publish were more were books as I also wanted to publish on the web as well as publish as a PDF or a, or a download of a ebook. Um, and without question, uh, it's easier to use LaTeX for that kind of output. Um, uh, you know, you get things like uh, bibliography management, you get things like index generation, you know, all that kind of stuff. It just comes out in the wash. Uh, and it's much easier to do with LaTeX. Now, I'm um, I believe you can do all that stuff with Word nowadays, but as I previously mentioned, I've got something of a prejudice, uh, and that is that Word is dog shit uh, for doing large, complex documents. Um, naturally, opinions vary, and I've no doubt Word has improved considerably since I used it uh, many, many years ago. Um, but, um, like I say, LaTeX will do you the job. And I also like the fact that LaTeX has the massive, massive advantage that it is uh, open source, freely available, very, very stable. Um, uh, you know, I mean, it's based on tech, which is a, a, a piece of code which hasn't been modified for like 30 years or something. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, it's basically, to all intents and purposes, tech is bug free. Um, uh, I say to all intents and purposes, I mean, no doubt there are bugs in it, but you know, none that people have found. Uh, LaTeX is slightly less stable because it's layered on top, but nevertheless, it's very stable. And once you get used to some of its idiosyncrasies, it, it, it's easy enough to use. Um, the really big advantage of using these programs is that they are processing text files. Okay, you'll notice that almost everything in here is a text file. Okay, so you can you can cut out pretty much everything. Yeah, so the auxiliary file. Uh, okay, text file. Uh, I don't know about DVI. Let's have a look. Look at that, text file. Uh, it's got some weirdness in there. I think actually it's a, it's a, it is a, a binary format. But, uh, what about temp? Uh, temp, uh, yep, yeah, that's a text file. Xref. Text file. IDX, which is the index. Text file. Uh, 
PDF we know isn't. What about LG? Yeah, text file. Uh, it's where all the cascade style sheet is stored while it's being created. Okay, so uh, uh, most of these are intermediate files. Okay, so uh, uh, when you look at the uh, output of uh, LaTeX Make or you know, Make for HT or whatever, um, you'll see it is doing several passes. So, for example, it will make a pass over the raw LaTeX file. Uh, and that will identify things like uh, labels and where they are, and uh, references and where they're used. Uh, but it doesn't do anything with them on that first pass, other than write them out to these external .orgs files, things like that. Um, then it makes a second pass where it uses those external files and feeds them into uh, the final output. Same goes for indexes. Okay, so it goes through the entire set of documents, identifying everywhere you've put an index marker and writes those out to the IDX file or the IND file. Um, uh, so they're all marked out. Yeah, so, um, dot, dot, in, oops, index. Okay, so that's the final output. And IDX is where it just puts all the markers. Okay, so IDX is constructed on the first pass. Then it constructs the index file uh, using the IDX file, Z, because there could be more than one depending on the structure of your system, uh, of your documents. Uh, then it will do another pass, which will take the uh, raw document, process it again, this time using the auxiliary file and the uh, 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 yeah, the auxiliary file, uh, and fill in all the references. Uh, and then it will use the IND file whenever you put in your print index, which is basically just inserts the file. So it's like doing uh, input for the IND file. Same goes for your bibliography. It will take uh, your bibliography source, uh, and every time you do a, uh, a citation, it will extract it from the uh, bibliography, turn it into something suitable uh, for... Um, LaTeX, uh, it'll be a .bib file, mm -hmm. and then when you when you process the file for the last time, it will look up where you've put to output the bibliography and basically insert the constructed bibliography file. And that way, uh, it keeps everything simple, uh, but you're just constantly reprocessing the same file over and over again until eventually you do a pass through where it's not created any new files. Uh, uh, other than the final output, in which case you know you're done. Uh, uh, if you haven't put out any special additional files, it's kind of neat, uh, and that simplicity is what makes it so appealing. Sure, not the trickiest thing in the world, uh, and it's not uh, WYSIWYG, uh, but it's also fairly distraction-free because uh, when you're editing. Uh, all you're looking at really is whatever's in the, the document here. Yeah? Now I've I've made it a bit more uh, a bit more complicated because I've actually broken it down like this. Okay, but when you get to the thing you're actually editing, uh, say chapter one book, uh, in here. Uh, this text uh, is, is, you know, this would be a great big long block of text, uh, and that's all you're really concerned about. All, all this nonsense, uh, you know, vanishes into the background by comparison. Uh, and in, in actual fact, I use a, um, a system like this, which helps me focus on, you know, sorry, yeah, when I'm working. Uh, it will be something like this. Yeah, so I'm, I'm right away. Uh, and and uh, it, it keeps everything nice and neat and well focused. And it's just text with the occasional, and like I say, in, admittedly, in the technical manuals that I am uh, going to be writing, there'll be an awful lot of markup uh, for you know code blocks and things like that. Um, 
but generally speaking uh, it's fairly distraction free the good thing is that it's also because it's so straightforward to read um, you know you can see immediately where problems are likely to arise anyway that's uh, I guess it's uh, to a large extent uh, it's personal choice um, Uh, but I like it. Uh, I, I think it keeps everything nice and clean and simple. Uh, and because it's all text-based and the program's open source, uh, it's unlikely that it's ever going to run into problems of proprietary changes or suddenly not being available. Uh, you know, which is thing, something that does happen occasionally. Uh, companies go out of business uh, or stop producing a particular piece of software or you know, stop producing a compatible piece of software. Um, when it's when it's open source, that's much less likely to happen. And worst case scenario, uh, you've still got all of your source material. It's just basic text files, uh, and it's very unlikely uh, that basic text files are going to go out of fashion. Uh, you know, they're so fundamental. I suppose one day they might, but uh, certainly not in my lifetime. Right, uh, yes, okay, so that was a bit of a side, wasn't it? And not really related to what I wanted to, uh, I was, what I wanted to do it was continue investigating uh, the text for HT. So we found some interesting stuff about publishing uh, web. Oh, look, there's even a Python tech. Uh, uh, R Markdown. Where we go? Uh, Pandoc. And actually, right, text for HT can be used on Markdown itself. Uh, uh, from uh, text files convert from R Markdown, so you can use. But yeah, I mean, I knew I could do this. Pandoc to tech. Uh, uh, hmm. Interesting. Yes, yeah, so I can see here. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's cool. I'm becoming increasingly excited. What's Python tech? Uh, I've set code that's passed to Python. Python tech allows you to run Python code from within the LaTeX environment and automatically include the output. Cool! You see, this is what yeah this is what gets my geek on is this kind of stuff where you, you discover people are always solving problems uh, pigment highlighting python tech supports syntax highlighting via pigments uh, any language supported by pigments can be highlighted oh oh it's just too good isn't it uh, Python can be more complex. Yeah, okay, so yeah, okay. I get it. I command can even bring in verbatim content. Okay, so you've got backslash pi command, I assume. You've also got a pi command inline use backslash pigment. Okay. 
Okay, so I assume it's not very clear. I assume. This is a special package. I mean, obviously, you've got Pi command. Mm -hmm. It's not not very well written, but I assume Python Tech is is some sort of package. Oh, well, it's something to think about. Uh, HTML5, but it's not really producing good quality HTML5, is it? If it's not using things like the section command, there must be a way of processing it. Uh, and then you've got make for HT, which really is just doing the multiple. Um, the original way is to use HT LaTeX command to convert LaTeX source to HTML5, you can use TF8, blah 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 blah. Uh, so I can take it as quotes. Yeah, okay. An easier way is to use make for HT. The same output. Oh, okay. Place files indexing for HT in your work directory and add require package, blah blah blah. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. Numbers instead of page numbers.
Thing an index using Yeah, I mean that's a good point. If you're producing output for the web, pages don't make sense. But sections do. So that's another thing to think about. Uh, the difference between, between producing the book uh, on um, the web compared to the book on the uh, as an ebook, it will be things like indexing and table of contents. Now, table of contents is fairly straightforward because you don't, you know, I mean, you, you know, none of these need um, a table of contents. You can, you can just put the links directly on the titles. You don't need the page numbers or anything. So that's easy enough. The index, however, uh, it doesn't make sense to have page numbers, um, but having sections does because by default, um, well, not by default, but generally, when you produce a book as a web page, as a website, uh, you break them out by section levels, uh, and therefore the links will then make sense uh, to go to the section headings. Yeah, important note to self. Um, uh, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so we've got something else to think about. Um, what's this? Alternative match packages in the preamble. PDF pages is always one of the packages that causes uh, Uh, okay. So again, uh, this is again this is when you uh, there are certain uh, when you when you're processing LaTeX you use these packages. Now, obviously, if you wanted to include um, a particular page from a particular PDF as part of your document. Uh, that doesn't make sense when doing it when you're trying to use HTML. So that's what this does. Uh, it when it finds what it knows is going to be a problematic package, it just replaces it and replaces any commands that it produces. Uh, yeah. Uh, Cool. Now, as far as things like uh, my complaint that it's not using uh, the structural things like article and session, uh, section, I don't think there's any reason why you shouldn't do that. Uh, because 
Uh, Tech for HT certainly has a facility that allows you to modify uh, that modifies output. Uh, uh, here we go. Provides configuration for default behavior. Uh, to achieve alternative outcomes. Um, So you can change the CSS, which is fine, and we're already heavily relying on that in order to make our pages, as I say, look like, not look like dog shit. Uh, I don't want to, it, I don't want to use too much. Uh, you know, I don't want to make them look too odd. They they need to look like uh, readable material. And they need to have a, at least a passing resemblance to the print form, particularly the articles. Uh, uh, the book can vary somewhat uh, and will do because, of course, it's decomposed into sections, uh, whereas a book is a book. Um, Right. Um, right. I'm not going to bore everyone by sitting here and just talking through this stuff. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> uh, yeah, watching me read web pages is probably not the most interesting thing in the world. The point is, uh, I'm going to go away and have a think about this and do some reading, and then we'll do some examples maybe next time. <laughs>